Hi there. In the previous video, we discussed the gap encoder. In that video, I explained how one core feature of this encoder is that it can do a little bit of topic modeling while also encoding text. The observation being that sometimes we are dealing with a dirty category, which is a categorical feature that has a very high cardinality, and the gap encoder can be seen as a nice way to generate features for such columns. However, you could wonder, if we're dealing with a dirty category that can kind of be modeled as if it's text, then maybe there are some other techniques at our disposal as well. After all, we've also got word embeddings, or maybe even some sentence transformers. And you could rightly wonder, if we're going about this dirty category by modeling it more like text, then maybe we should use these techniques from the field of NLP instead. As always, if you want to make such a claim, you probably should run a benchmark of sorts, and that is what I'm going to be doing in this video. The benchmark is totally not going to be all-encompassing or perfect. The main goal that I have is that we come out with some insights. So I'll be comparing the gap encoder against these other techniques, and I'll also compare them with normal count vectorizers inside of scikit-learn. There are going to be some interesting lessons along the way. I am back in my Jupyter notebook over here, and this notebook in particular contains lots of scripts to help me do a bit of a benchmark. I will omit a lot of the details. You can find this script in the show notes if you'd like to know more. But the goal of the benchmark is that we're going to take this column, this employee title over here, and that is going to be the main feature that we're going to be using to predict a salary that is also attached to this employee salary data set. But we are going about this in a couple of different ways. For sure, we're going to be using the gap encoder, but I'm also going to be using other techniques to encode this column, and I'll be making a comparison. As a first benchmark, we're going to keep things relatively simple. I'm just going to be making features for a linear regression over here. But you can see that I have these different pipelines that I will be running. The first pipeline will just use the gap encoder, and this second pipeline over here is going to first do this count vectorization as we might normally. This is going to give us lots of n-grams, and uh, out of this will come a big sparse array. And then I'm following that up with a truncated SVD component. This is very similar to principal component analysis in lots of ways. It's just that at the time of making this script, this was the main way inside of scikit-learn to turn sparse arrays into smaller, dense ones. And PCA has only been able to handle the sparse features recently. That's the only reason why I'm using truncated SVD here instead of PCA. Moving on below, I'm also generating features that are just the count vectorizer with nothing else. And below that, you can see that I'm using this sentence encoder over here, which is an estimator from the embedder library, which under the hood calls the sentence transformers library. This sentence encoder under the hood will call a BERT transformer model, and while there are lots of settings to consider here, I'm just going to go with the default. And I'm also going to be comparing that to this byte pair encoder over here. For all intents and purposes, the byte pair encoder over here is really just word embeddings. It's just that the byte pair encoder has been trained on subwords instead. Note that there's also no transformer model under the hood here. I'm really just aggregating all the different word embeddings for all the different tokens, and that's what this pipeline is all about. So, I have lots of different pipelines. Let's just see how they compare. When I do the cross-validation, here's what the results look like. On the x-axis over here, you can see the different pipelines. They all have a name. And on the y-axis here, you can see a score. I am just using the default score that scikit-learn gives me, and we could definitely have a good discussion about whether or not we want to use maybe mean squared error instead. But for now, I'm just going to assume that the base score is sufficient for us to compare. And when I do that, I do see some interesting patterns. It seems that the gap encoder, as well as the SVD technique, doesn't really give us high scores. Part of that could be due to the fact that we're choosing a small number of components. So we could choose to maybe raise that. That definitely has an effect. But one other observation that is interesting as well is the fact that the base count factorizer approach is actually not bad. It outperforms both the transformer model as well as the word embedding model. 
So all of that is pretty interesting, but we could wonder if it's fair to make a comparison with a linear regression at this point. After all, it could be that there are very interesting clusters in these features that are generated, and maybe we need a model that can cut up the feature space more in order to really benefit from it. A linear regression, in the end, is a relatively simple model, so maybe we should compare all of these scores with a histogram-boosted tree instead. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rerun the pipeline for these featureization techniques, and I'm going to keep this score intact. The reason is that we're using count vectors here, and those are sparse features, and the histogram gradient boosted ensemble doesn't support those. But we are hopefully going to see if these other featureization techniques can be improved by using a different model behind it. And here's what that looks like. This is what we had before. So this is a linear regression and all the pipelines that we mentioned before. This is the same chart, but we are using a histogram gradient boosting regressor instead. And in order to make the comparison, I have kept this bar around over here. So this bar is still the linear regression, so to say, but it does allow us to compare against all of these other uh, models. And we can also see that there's actually a difference now. This pipeline over here with the sentence transformer model, that is now the best performing model. And I believe it's fair to attribute that to the fact that this histogram gradient boosted regressor, that has more flexibility when it comes to finding interesting pockets in the feature space. Now, before wrapping up this video, I was wondering what I might be able to do to improve the score of the gap encoder further. It's definitely not underperforming or anything, but I was kind of wondering if I might be able to beat the performance of the transformer model over here. And it turns out that's well possible. The main reason being is that right now I'm just benchmarking this on 10 components. Put differently, it's only able to cluster 10 topics. But maybe there's a few more. So I figured I ran a small extra benchmark just on that. And that's what I've done below over here. I've got the pipeline that I had before. The base number of components that I've been using in this entire benchmark has been 10 so far. But now I am passing this pipeline into a grid search object over here, and I'm just giving it a few extra settings to go ahead and try. When I do that, I have these mean test scores across all of these different variables, and lo and behold, if I now look for the maximum value, it is at 0 0.848 something. And when I scroll back up, that is definitely on par with what the transformer model over here does. So all in all, what does this tell us? Well, having seen this final benchmark, I do hope that you can appreciate that it is pretty impressive what is happening here. It's not so much the fact that this number is high. I mean, that's great, don't get me wrong, but the cool thing here is that we are able to do that while also running a topic model that gives us some interpretability. And it's mainly that combination that is going to be interesting going forward. As is often the case, do take this benchmark with a grain of salt because I'm really just comparing one column to one outcome variable. If you were to do this properly, you would also have to include the other columns in this data set. However, if you are dealing in a scenario where you're dealing with these dirty categories, I do suggest you give this gap encoder a spin. You can download the latest version of Scrub, and inside of that you'll find the gap encoder, as well as a couple of other encoders that can really help out when you're dealing with tabular data. So feel free to check it out if you haven't already.